I'm glad you're back for the second video. I'm going to show you how to complete the My Situation section. So let's go to the uh, rubric. Uh, and here you can actually skim, you know, read the, the first uh, page and the second page, which is about the cover note. But really, the next step or one of your first steps is really to complete My Situation. So what goes into this section, you can see here in the um, ratings, you can see a number of things. This will tell you like what's key to this getting this section right. And then in the My Situation section, actually some of the information you're going to repeat from what you put in the box. All right, so it's, it can be your choice. You, you may choose say, okay, it's fine. I'm fine in the box or your narrative may flow better if you repeat information. Um, but My Situation is about spelling out, writing out everything you know everything you don't know. And then, of course, everything you know, everything you don't know in relation to your local situation, to your challenge, to the question that you want to answer. So if you're short on time, um, you can just use refer to this, work directly in the word template, describe your situation, everything you know, everything you don't know. Now, we don't need generic statements. You know, we have a problem with coverage. Uh, we don't know the, the denominator. Um, you know, we don't know, you know, so you want to spell out with as much specificity as possible. That means who, what, when, why, where, and how. If you're going to share a piece of information, make sure you can answer these, as many of those questions uh, as you are able to, to get really specific. What is your challenge and why is it important where you work? And so when you describe your situation, how is the piece of information you're sharing about the situation relevant to your challenge? Um, how, why does it matter in relation to the question that you want to answer? So we see in some cases people just copying and pasting tons of information. That's not what we want. Uh, we want you to focus on what is it that you know and do not know about your situation that actually matters uh, in relation to your challenge, in relation to the question that you want to answer. And what you don't know is almost, almost uh, or maybe even more important in some cases than what you do know. So if you know that some of your data is not reliable, some of your data sources you question, so they don't match what you observe in the field, that's very important information. We'll come back to that in the data sources around triangulation. But for now, um, let's go through now the rubric. Um, this gives you sort of more detailed advice, guidance, to help you think through what you put into this My Situation section. So you can see here, introduce yourself where you work, your function title. You don't need to put your name. That's recorded automatically in, uh, in the system. Um, describe the most important challenge you face at work. So yes, you have done that in the box. Uh, but in order to build a coherent narrative, you probably want to repeat yourself there. So it's summarized in the box. So we can see it right at the top. But it, you need to build a good narrative. And now, key step is step three, turning a ch your challenge into a question. And answering this question is the goal of your situation analysis. So again, you've done this in the box. You have write out the question you want to answer by analyzing your situation. But as you build, describe the description of your situation, probably you're going to want to, uh, again, restate that question. And then Step four is actually key. So what is your local situation? We don't know what's going on where you work. You do. You have local expertise because you work there every day. And so tell us, explain it to us to help us understand why your challenge matters uh, to you and how answering your question could help you address your challenge. Now, to go back to step three or point three uh, above, how to turn your challenge into a question, um, you can ask yourself, what do I need to know to be able to start tackling my challenge? Write down what you need to know. Now, if this includes a list of things you need to know, choose one thing that you're able to find out at this stage. That's going to what you're, uh, what you're going to focus on in your situation analysis. And then turn what you wrote into a question. So we have examples on the following page. So on page four of the rubric, you have examples here. But again, if you're short on time, just write out everything you know, everything you don't know in relation to the question you want to answer, your challenge, and be specific about your local situation. Um, asking the right question so is important uh, because everything else in the situation analysis will be focused on answering that question, starting with that description of what you don't 
know and what you know about your situation. So having the question, make sure your question is important. It actually matters. Answering the question would help you know what you need to know to address your challenge. Uh, can you take action on it? So that's why, you know, when I said, well, I want to know where the children are, that's, okay, so I know now what? But I want to know how to reach the children is actually a better question. It requires more inf information, different kinds of information, but probably quite important. Um, is it appropriate? So there's no point asking questions that where you know you, there's simply no answer you can get to at this point. Now, you may highlight that in this case, your next steps would be, well, okay, I, I have this very important question. It is actionable. It should be feasible. But right now, I don't have anything. So what are the next steps to uh, begin to develop the the evidence, uh, the understanding, this, the, the further analysis that will help me uh, uh, get from you know, to, to a place where it is an appropriate question to ask and that you're able to answer. Um, we do ask you to focus on one question. There may, you may have several because of time. Remember that this is a time-bound exercise. We don't want you or need you to launch this big, expansive research project. That's not what this is. This is, as a practitioner, um, finding a burning question and doing a structured short-term exercise to figure out what you know, what, what you don't know, and what that means for the next steps that you want to take. And then here, the last thing is really, again, what I, I, I said, referred to this earlier, explain what is specific and local. Use your own words to provide a summary of your local situation. You know things that people in the capital city at the Ministry of Health responsible for planning and coordination and management of the entire immunization program cannot know because they're not here with it. They're not there with you. Um, and it's important that you use what you know. And that means and that includes your experience, your direct observations, things that you know that you can see are not right. Now, we'll also talk about questioning your assumptions and recognizing the limitations of experience. But at this stage, I want to encourage you to write down when you describe your situation. Uh, it's good to use figures, graphs, reports to cite specific figures, but do not neglect what you know because you've been there, because you've seen it, because you can tell that there's something going on. Now, recognize and make sure it is clear that what you're putting down is actually uh, your personal observations, not to be confused with other kinds of evidence, but it is valid. It can be important if treated in the right way to draw on and use and value the experience that you have, the things that you know because you are there every day. And the last point is really by reading your situation, I need to feel like I am there. I'm going to be reading many of your situations and I need to feel that you are sharing what is actually happening, what you know, what you do not know in relation to your challenge and in relation to the question you want to answer. Now, here you have at the peer review stage, there are specific questions we've addressed to reviewers, but you can and should look at these. Is it clear why the challenge is the right priority and why answering the question could help the author, that's you, tackle the challenge? If not... We ask reviewers to explain to the author what else you need to know about their local situation and to suggest to you how you can improve the formulation of your question and why. Now, why does this matter? It is because when we reach the peer review stage, um, your peer reviewers, so colleagues will be given your situation analysis, will be asked to give you feedback. It is not about giving you a grade. It is about helping you improve your project and so one of the decisions they'll have to make is where do you fit on this scale obviously there's no challenge or question you recognize here we're asking you for your situation but one of the key things is making sure the challenge or question is identified and then at the at the two level at the two rating you see Challenge and question identified, but it is unclear why they are important. So what you describe about your situation, what you know, what you do not know, has to make clear why the challenge and question identified are important. And of course, if it's a four, it means you have an important challenge and question identified, and it's supported by comp compelling explanation of your local situation. That compelling explanation of your local situation summarizes what you know, what you do not know, 
in relation to your challenge and to the question identified. So that for this section, for the my situation now, it can be, this can be you know, a paragraph or this can be many paragraphs. What you decide to do there depends on two considerations. One is how much time you have. It is better to do something short and to the point than to do nothing at all. Second is you know, the nature of the problem and the question you want to answer. Of course, if you have figures, maps, reports, specific things you can cite, you should summarize them in your own words, reference them. Do not put them, do not copy and paste. Now, you can include things like maps and figures. That's very good to show those visualizations uh, as part of describing your situation, to show, you know, build a picture, help us feel like we are there. Uh, that is what I would say qualifies a successful situation uh, uh, analysis. And especially this section, my situation, I need to feel, bring me to your workplace, help me feel what you feel, why this challenge is, is important to you, what your local situation is, what is the question that you are trying to answer, and then for me to understand what you know, what you don't know, and what difference uh, that makes as you build the, the picture of your situation analysis.